Hello everyone, I am here to read The Danish Slaughterhouse, chapter 9 or chapter 10, I touch you, I don't know, I do numbering differently. I don't know how many times I have to say this, but I'm goddamn freaking nervous. I don't know what's going to happen in this chapter. I don't know if I'll have to age restrict this video. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why I keep coming back to this fan fiction. I guess it's just the intrigue of what might possibly happen. But at the same time, I know that it's going to gross me out. Anyway, let's get started. In the dimly lit lower levels of the mansion, Emil hobbled through the wine cellar to the door connecting the cellar to the laundry room cradling a basket of dirty laundry between his arm and his hip. Once he passed through the door, he hobbled to the joining washing machine and dryers and dropped the basket at his feet. He turned around and leaned back against the washer, taking out his cell phone from his pocket. He tapped on the screen with his thumb to get to his Twitter application and pressed it. He waited for it to load, and when it loaded, he logged on to his account and tapped on the text box to create a post. Ugh, so sick of having these damn stitches. Wish they'd fully healed already. Sick of Lucas making a damn fuss over me, man. Emil confirmed the post and locked off his account, setting his phone on the dryer and going to work on the laundry. He stood on his toes to reach the large container of detergent sitting on the shelf above the machines, ignoring the burning tingle prickling through around his ankle and pulling the container down. He uncapped the detergent and used the cap to measure the needed amount for his load when a buzzing rattle sounded from beside him. He set down the detergent and cap with an annoying smile. He picked up the vibrating phone without looking at the caller ID and pressed the green send button to answer it. He put the phone to his ear. Emil, what the hell? Wow, it hasn't even been a full minute yet. That's a new record for you. Emil chuckled. Hey, Karu. Oh, okay, so Hong Kong's calling. Emil, why the hell do you have stitches? What the fuck happened? Geez, sailor, tone down the potty mouth, will you? Emil teased. I'm almost too afraid to tell you if you're going to swear at me like that. Karu sighed into the phone. Emil, what happened? Come on, I'm scared. Emil smiled sweetly, touched at the worried tone Karu spoke with. All right, fine, I'll tell you. You know how I pre I'm pretty much stuck in, in Denmark with my Nordic brothers? Yes. And how Matthias has a tendency to make us do stupid shit in the name of brotherly bonding? Yeah. Emil bent over the washing machine and propped his elbows on top of it, using one hand to hold the phone to his ear and the other to rest his chin on. Well, he made us go out into the woods to hunt with these really cool rifles that the Swiss dude gave to him. And they have these awesome Phoenix riding stone thingies on the barrel. Emil. Oh, um, right. Anyway, we went out to the forest looking for, look for something to kill for dinner, but I was just strolling through the forest, listening to some songs to pass the time. Apparently I have deer legs because Matthias shot me. Twice. Karu guessed quietly. Twice? He yelled. Yeah, in the front and back of my ankle. Hurt like hell, too, Emil laughed. Emil, that's not funny. Emil stopped laughing abruptly and frowned. For as long as he dated Karu, he never heard Karu snap like that. He must be really worried. H hey, man, chill, okay? It's not even that serious. Oh, re oh, really? Yes, really. The doctor said that I was lucky because the bullets just scraped a couple layers of flesh and sinew just beneath the skin or something. The stitches are shallow, too, so the wound w should heal soon. How soon? He, the doctor, said that I need, I need about four to five weeks. Since I'm a nation, though, I'm guessing I only need about three weeks. Oh, so how long do you need now? Two weeks. Wait a damn second. You mean to tell me you've been like this for a week and didn't bother to tell me? What the hell, Lamil? Hey, language, Karu. And I wasn't able to because we're in a forest. The connection here, service here is so freaking sketchy. One minute, it's perfectly fine. The next minute, nothing. Nothing at all. So I couldn't call you or text you or chat with you on Facebook even if I wanted to. And you did want to, right? And they chuckled again. Of course I did. I miss you. I miss you too, babe, Karuz said. And they could almost hear the loving smile in his voice. He then paused. That does seem a bit strange, though. What? The fact that he shot you. I could see that it was an accident if it was only, like, one shot, but Two? In the front and back? That just sounds too sketchy, bro. 
Maybe there were two shots because the gun was too powerful to stop at just one shot. I mean, Karut, those guns are high capacity semi automatic rifles, and just pulling the trigger once can send off a whole round of ammo. I was lucky to just get out alive with only two bullets at me. You heard Karut giggling in the other end. What? Look at you, sounding like some NRA freak. <laughs> but still, I feel something's not right with that whole accidental shot story. I'd watch my back around him if I were you, Amel. Amel hung his head. Ugh, Karu, you ain't your weird superstitious mumbo jumbo. Relax, okay? Matthew was doing nothing but apologizing to me when we went to the hospital and back. He even carried me on his back and made me dinner to make up for what he did. Whoa, he made you dinner? And you're still alive? Amel stretched out a leg behind him and started to tap his toe on into the floor. It was pretty all right at first. He made this really awesome pasta dish with meatballs, and it was out of this world. I never knew he could cook like that. But then, then he served ice cream. And that was delicious too, and it was my favorite flavor. But then we just all passed out. He snapped his fingers. Just like that. Whoa, that's so freaky. It gets freakier too. We all woke up a day later and our bodies felt weird. In fact, my body still feels weird. It feels tingly and prickly like there are little electric bugs swimming inside me and zapping my pores or something. Really? Caro started to sound distant. Huh. That sounds so familiar for some reason. Karu? Isn't Kiku working on- Karu, hello? Oh, uh, sorry, dude. I spaced out for a second. Anyway, how's everybody doing? Everybody's doing okay, I suppose. Except for Peter. For some odd reason, he started to act really weird. He's not so bratty anymore. In fact, he's not acting bratty at all, especially when Matthias is around. He's quiet and jumpy, and he's sleeping in late a lot and keeps complaining about back pain or something. I think a couple days ago he started getting irregular bloody diarrhea. A mill shuddered at the memory. Ugh, those poor couch cushions. Man, did Matthias throw a fit over that? The mill? What? I'm not so sure about this because I'm not a professional, but it sounds like Peter was maybe hurt or something. Um, uh, what? Are, are they actually gonna, um, I'm suddenly feeling really uncomfortable right now. Hurt? What do you mean? What I mean is that you may have a pedo in the house, Emil. What? What the hell are you talking about? No one would do that to Peter. Emil, just hear me out, okay? Side. I remember reading a book or two out of boredom, and they said something. They said that everything that Peter is doing fits the signs of a touched child. Suddenly quiet, needs lots of sleep from low energy, and even being physically ill. Tell me, Emil, has he been totally withdrawn and having nightmares? How the hell am I supposed to know if the kid had nightmares? I'm not his parent. He doesn't come to me if he has a bad dream. Emil paused and looked away. But I have noticed that he isn't as playful as he usually was. Right, and you said that he's more quiet when Matthias is around him, right? Yeah? Well, wait, man. Matthias wouldn't do something like that. I mean, yeah, he's a prick who has a sort of violent streak, and he picks on people too much, especially Peter, but Matthias is no pedophile. I've known him for too long. He isn't the type to hurt people in that way, especially little defenseless kids. No, it's just a possibility. And that possibility is wrong. Didn't those same studies also say that those signs don't automatically mean the child is suffering molestation? Well, yeah, but still. And since Matthew isn't that big of a pervert, then you're wrong. Maybe the kid is just feeling homesick. Homesick? Really, Emil? Do you think that homesickness can get so bad that it causes bloody diarrhea and, and back pain? Emil sighed. Caruth, this is making me sick to my stomach. Can we stop talking about this? Why? Matthew didn't touch you, did he? No, he didn't, because he wouldn't do something like that. I know, Karu, I just know. There was a pause at the phone as Karu sighed and let Emil calm down. Okay, Emil, if you feel that way, then I won't push the idea any further. Just promise me that you'll at least look at, watch out for Matthias and stay safe. Karu, please, for me, so that I'll know you're safe. Karu, he doesn't. Pretty please, Karu cooed. Emil can imagine Karu's poking out 
his bottom lip in a baggy pout. Okay, honestly, putting aside all the deep stuff going out, that putting, poking out the bottom lip thing kind of reminds me of what I used to do when I was younger. In a pecking pout, and it kills him how easy he, he can comply to Karu just by imagining it. Ugh, fine. I promise I'll stay safe or whatever, okay? Good. You know I love you, right? And then grinned wild, widely. Hell, heh. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I love you too, you manipulative bastard. Aw, why am I manipulative? Because you used your cute begging voice and I knew that you were doing that cute little pouty thing with your lip and you know how that gets me too warm and fuzzy to say no. <laughs> You're just putty in my hands, Curry chuckled. You know it isn't nice to use your powerful evil, Emil replied in a sing-song voice. Oh, don't worry, babe. When I have you in my hands, you know that I only do things to make you feel good, Curry purred. Oh, really? What kinds of good things? And they'll purr back. Well, I learned this new thing with my pinky. The boy went silent. Uh, hello? Karu? And they'll said, hello? He pulled the phone away and looked at the screen, which read, service unavailable. Stupid cock-blocking phone. Again, putting aside all the deep stuff that just happened, that actually is kind of funny. Stupid cock blocking phone. And they'll spat at the device before shoving it into his pocket. He picked up the basket of clothes, yanked open the washing machine slid, and dumped the clothes inside it. He poured it into the detergent, turned on the machine, and slammed the lid closed when the wash started. Ugh, Karu's gonna kick my ass when he sees me. After waiting five minutes for the wash, Amel looked around the room to make sure that he was really alone and pulled out his iPod. He powered up his device, flipped through the playlist until he selected one. He selected a song from the playlist, put the, the earbuds in his ear. As the song began, he did a little slow swing dance, bobbing his head heavily. His hair swung gently from side to side, brushing his forehead and ears. When the song came into its chorus, he started to sing. I don't think I know this song, so I can't really sing along to it. For freedom we rise, learn to fly, reach the sky. Legend will carry you for thousands of miles. Take a stand, hold the land. Make sure that everyone's ready to win. Flight and speed's all we need. Team up for battle, we fly. Fly. We fly. Gravity hurts. Lost in his musical world yet again, Emil failed to sense that he had gained an audience during his little dance. The watcher came in as the song went into the second verse and leaned against the threshold in the cellar laundry room doorway, arms crossed over his chest and a coy grin across his face as Emil sang his heart out. Ah, creatures keep calling, reaching within. Stealthy they climb from the dark. Yeah, yeah. Searching for wisdom, searching for truths. Show us the things you can do. And they'll point to the space in front of him. Maybe it's all up to you. You owe. For freedom we rise, learn to fly, reach the sky. A legend will carry you thousands of miles. Take a stand, hold the land. Make sure that everyone's ready to win. Flight and speed's all you need. Team up for battle, we fly, fly. And those one fan audience pushed him self off the threshold and walked over to the singing teen nation as he started to bob his head harder and playing an air guitar. He stood behind a mill and shoved his hands into his pocket, bobbing his head along with a mill and chuckling. Just when he reached out to put a hand on a mill's shoulder, a mill tossed his head back and shot his fist in the air, ending the guitar solo with a powerful. For freedom we rise. For freedom we rise. For thousands of miles, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know the song, so I can't, like, sing it or anything. Yeah. And those watcher jumped and pulled his hand back with a sort of goofy, amused grit. When he was sure the song was over, he gently grabbed Emil's shoulder. Wah! Emil yelped. He jumped and spun around, clutching his beating heart tightly. What the? Matthias, what the hell? Matthias let out a howl of laughter. Oh, man, Ice, I didn't know you had some sweet moves. What the hell are you doing here? Mill asked as he took out his earbuds and paused his iPod. Matthew tilted his head and cocked an eyebrow. Uh, I live here? Mill rolled his eyes. I mean, what are you doing here in the basement? I own this basement. Mill growled and turned back to the washing machine. Never mind it. Ah, oh, dude, I'm just fooling with you, Matthew said as he ruffled Mill's hair. I was just taking a break from installing the satellite for internet connection and came down here f to get a beer from the cellar. Then I heard you screeching lyrics like a crazy baboon see you dancing. Man, that was fun to see. Go away. Aw, don't pout. Matthews put his arm around Emil's shoulder and brought his face next to Emil's. I still liked it, you know. That was 
cryo shell, right? Emil sniffed. Yeah? Ah, oh, you like one of my bands. I always knew you thought I was cool. Oh, shut up, Matthias, Emil said as he shrugged off Matthias' arm. Just because I like a band that happens to be Danish doesn't mean that I think you're cool in any shape or form. You're still an idiotic asshole to me. Aw, oh, you hurt me so, I see, Matthews whimpered. He then pulled Emil's head into his chest in a tight hug. But it's still cool that you like one of my bands. We have something in common. Please, the only reason you like the band is because they originated in your country. Have you ever even listened to any of their songs? Tried to understand them? I mean, I would... I'm just going to say this. I would say, oh man, this used to remind me of my past. I and it's pretty much me in the story. I'm not saying that. I'm not going to say that. I haven't said that in a long time. Because I have a feeling something bad's going to happen to him. Ugh. I don't want to think about that. Oh, great. Another indie hipster. Dude, if I didn't listen to the band, then I wouldn't have known whose song you were butchering, right? So come the fuck down with that whole unknown music passion shit or whatever the hell it's called. Emil opened and closed his mouth, unsure how, on how to respond to the insult. He settled for shoving Matthias off, crossing his arms and directing his glare to an invisible object on the floor. The whole act made Matthias laugh, laugh and ruffle Emil's hair again. Emil scoffed and slapped Matthias' hand away. Ah, uh, don't get so pissy eyes, Matthews cooed mockingly, reaching for Emil's hand, head again. You know I love ya. Go away, Emil spat, swatting away Matthews' hand again. Matthews looked at his assaulted hand and shrugged. Whatever, dude. Anyway, even though I like Kyra Show, none of their songs are my most favorite song of all time. Emil glanced at Matthews from the corner of his eyes. Really? Yeah, really. There's this really old song that I absolutely love. Matthias looked up towards the ceiling and took his finger on his chin in thought. Hmm, I don't recall the, so the band who wrote it. Maybe Divinity Divine DeVille? I don't know, but it was awesome eyes. I used to sing it to Lucas a, couple, a, lot, of, a lot a couple of decades back. He then cleared his throat and sang it in a throaty falsetto voice. I can't do that, so I'm just going to read it. I've, I love myself. I want you to love me. When I feel down, I want you above me. I search myself. I want you to find me. When I forget myself, I want you to remind me. I don't want anybody else. When I think about you, I touch myself. Oh, I don't want anybody else. Oh, no, no, no. Amel stared at Matthias, gaping in a combination of disgust and amusement. Holy crap, seriously? He chuckled after a few moments of silence. That masturbation song. Oh, so you have heard of it? Matthias chuckled. Yes, as a matter of fact, I have, Matthias. Don't forget I was around during that time, too. Emil giggled and shook his head. I can see why you like that song, though. That singer was so needy and into herself, just like you are. Am not. Are too. I bet that if Lucas didn't exist and that nobody else wanted to fuck you, you'd just fap to a picture of yourself. Oh, come on. I could find someone else to masturbate, too, if I didn't have my kitten. Oh, really? Like who? Um, I don't really know exactly, Matthias shrugged. Hmm, exactly my point. Emil turned to the washing machine and peeked inside it to check on his clothes. Matthias pocketed his hands and watched the boys back with a bored expression, humming the tune to the song and tapping his feet. He then started to sing the song quietly, tilting his head from side to side. When he noticed that Emil was rocking his head too, he smiled to himself and sang louder. You're the one who makes me come running. You're the song that makes me shine. When you're around, I'm always laughing. I want to make you mine. I close my eyes and see you before me. I think I would die if you were to ignore me. A fool could see just how much I adore you. I'd get down on my knees. I'd do anything for you. And then started swaying to, Emil, to, um, to Matthias, singing, singing, giggling, and humming along, just like when he put his earbuds to li put his earbuds to listen to his private music. Emil was too lost in the song to notice what was happening. Oh no! Oh no! Matthias came up closer behind Emil, doing a little dance. Oh, he looked down at the boy. I'm getting bad feelings. I'm getting bad feelings. I, I am getting major red flags. Like, I don't know if this is just some sixth sense I have, but I'm getting red flags. I don't want anybody else. When I think about you, I nah, touch myself. I really hope my mom isn't listening in. Oh, I don't want anybody else. Oh, no, 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 yeah. He kept repeating the chorus, watching the oblivious boy below him dance happily. 
Slightly press his hips against the mill and waited for a mill to respond dictatively, snigger, snickering when the mill continued to sway unwittingly, brushing himself on at his crotch. Red flags are going up. Red flags are going up. Wow, this kid is really out of it, Matthew snorted as he slowly wrapped his arms around a mill's waist and brought his mouth to a mill's ear. I have my Emmy bag. I'm prepared. I don't want anybody else, Matthews whispered in Mill's ear as he pushed down some of his body weight on the teen. When I think about you, I touch myself. The lack of melody in Matthews' voice pulled the Mill back into reality. He started to push up Matthews' arms. Matthews, what are you doing? He asked in a deadpan tone. I used the wrong tone, but I don't care. I'm freaking out. To use to Matthews' high cheeks to think seriously of the situation. Singing. What does it look like? Matthews replied. No, you idiot. I mean this. Oh, this? Nothing really. Just. Matthews started to push a mill into the washing machine, breathing heavily into his ear. Just showing you who I touched myself to if Lucas wasn't around. <laughs> Very funny, you dork. A mill attempted to push himself away from the washing machine, but Matthews pushed it back a little too roughly. He noticed. Matthews, seriously, knock it off already. Started to wiggle in Matthews' arms, but Matthews' grip was tightening every second. Seriously, Matthews, this is why people don't have fun with you. You don't know when to end a joke. He froze when he heard a dark, contemptuous chuckle. Who the fuck said I was joking? What? Dude, let go. Emil dug his fingers into Matthews' arms to pry them open. It was useless, though, as Matthews pushed Emil completely bent over the washing machine. Seriously, stop, Matthews. What the hell? Stop. He started to hyperventilate when he felt large hands grow around for his belt. Please. Guys, I am dead serious. If this gets any more graphic, I'm age restricting this video. I'm dead serious. Matthews pulled his hand away from Mel's hips and staked his fingers into Mel's hair, pulling his head back with the silvery locks. Jeez, I take a deep breath before you pass out already. I don't want... I don't want to fuck a comatose kid. Man, it's like you're a virgin or something. Wait, you aren't one, are you? Matthews, get off! Oh, wow, seriously, Matthews, you laughed. You're still a virgin, and you've been dating that cruel kid for how long? Fine, then. Listen, if you don't struggle so much and calm down, it'll make your first time easier for you, okay? No! Mill shouted as he felt Matthews' fingers under his shirt. I genuinely feel sick. I, I feel sick. I feel disgusted. And I still have to finish off this chapter. Ugh, no more food for Matthias, Lucas swore to himself as he sluggishly made his way to the kitchen. He lightly held his stomach in his hand and took deep breaths to get rid of the lightheadedness he was suffering. It was a week since that failure of a dinner Matthias made for the household. The dinner that caused everyone to get sick and pass out right, right where they sat. But the stomach aches and nausea reoccurred from time to time. This time, it had hit Lucas hard. What the hell was in that pasta? Lucas took a drinking glass from the kitchen cupboard and went to the refrigerator. He poked his head inside to look for any ginger ale, feeling relief at the cold temperature hitting his face. Wait, Matthews, my stitches! You're going to mess up my stitches! Lucas pulled his head out of the refrigerator and looked over the kitchen. What's that? Don't worry, it's not like I'm going to fuck your leg or something. Just chill. Matthias? Matthias, don't do this! Um, oh, cried. Please! Despite the nauseating feeling that made him want to vomit. Oh, please, I want to vomit already. I want to vomit right now. But I'm keeping it in for the rest of you guys. Moments before, Lucas sprinted through the door that led to the cellar of the base of the mansion. His drinking glass shattering on the floor behind him. He yanked it open and rushed inside, following the voices of his little brother and his boyfriend. 
Don't know about you, but if my significant other is trying to rape my little sibling, I would make sure that they would regret ever thinking of it. And I would hope that my older half-siblings would think the same if I were in that situation. Ugh, Amel, will you stop acting like such a little girl, man, boy, damn, it's just sucks. You're hurting me. Stop, out, stop. Lucas sped through the labyrinth of wide shelves, confused at the multiple directions the echoing shots were coming from. You know, I'm starting to like it when you struggle like this. Damn it, where are they? Lucas started to panic. Where are they? Wait, Emil said he was going to wash clothes. He has to be in there. Stop, let go, don't touch me. Matthias. I'm coming, Emil. Lucas spotted a large streak of light from the doorway of the laundry room. As he ran towards it in the sound of struggling, his sense seemed to slow to prepare for what he hoped wasn't what he thought it was. Matthias, stop, please, come on. Lucas. Lucas shot into the laundry room and tackled Matthias into the ground. He struck his fist into Matthias' jaw once, twice, thrice, before yanking the man up by the shirt collar and snarling in his face. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Ow, Lucas, calm down. Damn, what's wrong with you? Matthias tried to shove Lucas off his body, but Lucas pushed his hand away and shook him by the shirt collar violently, and his head rocked back and forth violently. What the fuck are you doing to my brother? Lucas demanded as he slammed his fist into Matthew's jaw again. Lucas, wait! Mill shouted. He took Lucas' arm and pulled him off. Don't do this! Lucas stared at his brother incredulously. Don't do this. Don't do this. I came in here to find my little brother. I was raped. And you're trying to calm me down so I won't beat the shit out of this rapist. Rape? Norris, what the fuck are you talking about? Matthew shouted as he stood on his feet. I wasn't going to rape a mill. What kind of nasty shit are you thinking? What the hell is this then? Lucas yanked a mill in front of Matthias, gestured to the messy hair, unbuckled belt, and sloppy t-shirt. I, I was joking around, okay? I guess, I guess I got too carried away with the joke, but I wasn't going to rape him. God, Lucas, you and your sick, in your fucking sick mind. Joking? Fuck that. I ought to fucking kill you. No, stop. Lucas, he's right. A mill pleaded, gripping his older brother's wrist. It was just, it was just him being an asshole again, okay? He wasn't going to do anything, all right? You know him. He's just too stupid to know when to stop. So just stop this. God, I woke up my cat. My cat was sleeping. And I just woke her up like... I don't care. I don't care if my little sibling would say this. I'd still beat the, I'd still beat the crap out of that person. I'm like, okay. I'm scrawny. I'm like the artist stereotype. Scrawny, still gonna beat them. Still not gonna stop me from beating them, even if it breaks some of my own bones. Ugh, where did I leave off? But Emil, Lucas, stop. Please. The room went silent as Emil and Lucas stared each other down, willing each other to back off and let him defend his loved one or to let the entire situation go. Matthias looked back and forth between the two brothers, arms crossed impatiently over his chest. Now with an annoyed huff, he pushed back Lu Lucas and stormed off. You bothervics have in your damn numerous minds. There's a joke around a bit more. Lucas turned on his heel to go after Matthias, but was held down by Emil. Hey, where do you think you're going, you ass? I'm not finished with you. Yeah, well, I'm finished with you too, Matthias said at the doorway. I'm going back outside to finish installing that Wi-Fi satellite. Don't wait up, precious. Lucas glared at things back as he and his little brother stood in the laundry room, his teeth bared in a wolf's ear and his fist shaking at his side. Emil refastened his belt and combed his fingers through his hair to smooth it back down. I should kill that motherfucker right now, Lucas snarled in the heavy silence. And why would you do that, Emil? Or Lucas? Emil snapped. Why, Emil, look at you! I've already told you that it was just him fooling around like an idiot. He does that, and you've known him long enough to know that. Let it go! Emil started to walk away, but Lucas grabbed his wrist and pulled him back. Lucas took a deep breath to calm his nerves and said in a low, firm voice, Emil, I know what I saw, and you know too. If Matthew is going to do, it is going to do to you what I think he was going to do, that I, as your big brother, must protect you by killing that motherfucker. Do you understand? Emil snatched his wrist away and replied in the same low, firm voice, And I know what, he, what was really going on, okay? You know Matthew's and and know that he wouldn't do something like that. Like, like, 
death to a person. At least not anymore. It's not a Viking anymore. You should just leave me alone. Understand? Mel turned away to leave. But no. Lucas, please. Mel said. Lucas could sense the fear and weariness in his voice. Please, just, just leave it alone. Mel exited the laundry room, leaving Lucas to gape after him in heartache. That person that warned me on Amino was right. This chapter screwed up. I'm putting a warning. Like, I'm not going to age restrict it because thank God it did not get any more graphic. But I'm still going to put warnings in the beginning of this video. Just. Mm. Just. Ugh. I honestly feel sick. I feel sick. I don't know what else to say. I'll see you guys next time.